And then we're going to bring David Shearer on stage from Origin Investments. Uh, Origin's been a, a longtime partner of Opportunity DB. They closed their OZ Fund 1 a while back, and they're on to QOZ Fund 2, investing in luxury multifamily real estate in growth markets all over the United States, but predominantly centered in the southern section of the United States. There's David. Great to see you. Um, you can dive in um, as soon as you're ready. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, yes, Origin Investments, we do three things, and you're right, uh, Jimmy, it's all in the southeast, Texas, and the southwest. Um, we've been around for 15 years. Um, what I'm most proud of, and I'm just going to jump right in, um, I'm most proud of our performance. Um, I think that my partner and I founded the firm in 2007. My partner's name is Michael Episcope. He's been on this in the past. Um, he's actually traveling, so I'm filling in. So you get the other partner today. Um, we have generated 24% returns on all of our investments since inception, the 2.1 equity multiple. I think a lot of people are drawn to our co-investment. We're very aligned as a company. As we sit today, we've um, raised and deployed a billion in equity and 75 million of that is my partner and my capital and increasingly the capital of our team. Um, and then in terms of investment partners, um, we have 2,900 investment partners and um, we value those relationships quite a bit. Um, in terms of um, where we are as a company and we wanna talk about um, QOZ at this point, um, QOZ is an extension of our development um, vertical. Um, and so we have offices throughout all of the areas that we invest. Um, so Nashville, we have an office where people live and work. Um, Atlanta, Dallas, Denver. Um, these are all offices that we have. So the QOZ uh, development strategy is an extension of our development strategy um, in these markets. The first fund was uh, 270 million of equity. We generally use about 60% uh, debt to equity levels. Um, and so the asset level was about 700 million in, in fund one. Um, fund two will be roughly the same size. Uh, it's a $300 million target raise. Um, we're just over uh, 180 million raised to date. We started raising, I believe in um, November of last year. Um, we anticipate that raise will complete in the next six months. Um, one of the differentiators at Origin in our Opportunity Zone um, investing is we're only investing in multifamily. We're only investing in these cities that, that we live and cover. Um, and so if you want a diversified QOZ fund that invests in multiple asset classes, that wouldn't be our fund if you believe that multifamily is an outperforming asset class, um, which it has been. Um, this is the highest performing asset class in real estate for the past 30 years, also the lowest standard deviation. And, and that's why we're here. It's, we're very data driven. Um, and this is, it's also my belief that it will continue. Um, and I don't have enough time to get into the whys, but we have lots of um, material on this on the site, origininvestments.com. Um, we do 40 to 50 webinars um, a year for our various funds. Um, and so please use this as a resource, um, just broadly, we believe in educating um, all investors on what we're doing. So the benefits of QOZ, um, if you think about our investment strategy, it's a development strategy followed by an operational strategy. And so regardless of who you invest with in a QOZ uh, fund, you need to be very certain about their um, the depth of their operations expertise and their, their business um, infrastructure. And so we've been around 15 years. We have 45 professionals at Origin um, throughout the country. Our returns have been exemplary. Um, we're a top decile manager. I think we, we check a lot of those boxes, but just understand whoever you're investing with, it's a long-term investment. And you need to be very um, confident in the management team, both to build, manage risk, and then operate the asset. Um, we believe that the areas we've selected are in the path of growth. A lot of the assets in fund two have been sourced over the last 
um, year to 18 months, and I'll get into that in a moment. Um, this is the depiction of, of where our offices are. Um, recently, uh, over the last two years, um, we've invested a lot of money into um, machine learning. Um, we call it origin multilytics. Um, we have uh, two in-house data scientists. And it really has just corroborated what we knew, um, which is we're in the right places. Um, and it's point forward predicting. Um, it, it processes about 2.7 billion pieces of data a month to create predictive um, analytics on future rent growth. And um, what we're seeing is these markets will continue to outperform um, in the next one, two, three, five years. This is a really important slide. I get this question a lot on all of our development funds. Um, we don't just develop in QOZ funds, we develop in market rate, um, non-QOZ math funds as well. And it's always a question about cash flow. When, when can I expect to get cash flow? And typically in a development, um, you're going to have anywhere from 24 to 30 months of, of building, and you're not getting cash flow when you're constructing it. And then there's 12, 15 months of lease up. And so the first 36 to 40 months of the construction deal, you're not getting cash flow, but you're building a tremendous amount of balance sheet value. And, you know, this is the area where we believe we develop to a 40% margin on average. And so this is, you know, simply put, if you're, if you're building for 300,000 a door, you're creating 400 to 420,000 of, of value. And, and that, that margin is both profit margin and it's also safety in the event that there's a correction. Um, you're not losing money, you're losing profit. Um, I actually view development when executed well, um, as incredibly defensive um, because you can control and, and, and this margin protects you. Um, this will be the fifth fund that Origin develops um, into. Um, QZ1 obviously is one that um, Jimmy mentioned, but um, our second fund, Origin Fund 2, Origin Fund 3, Income Plus Fund, Market Rate Fund, Growth Fund 4, we're, we're very active. I would say we're one of the most active multifamily developers in the country and certainly in these regions um, at this point. Um, we have over 7,000 units in development. The cash flow um, will start in year four. That'll come through refinance. And then after that, and that's the 20 to 25% see. And then after that, that's the six to 7%. And that's from cash flow from operations. Of course, you have to hold for 10 years to get the full uh, benefit. I can tell you in our fund, uh, the investors have the option to, to either get out after 10 years or stay in. Um, I'm a big investor in both QZ1 and QZ2. I will be staying in uh, because the, the money continues to accumulate um, for 15 more years tax-free. So you can actually hold until 2046 and it still accumulates tax-free, which I believe is just an enormous benefit. I, I view it as you're creating an IRA and, and letting it run. This is an example of the deal. And, and Jimmy, let me know if um, I'm low on time here. Um, I don't typically do 15 minute uh, things, but um, Ava Gainesville, it's very indicative of the types of deals that, that we're looking at. I can tell you in QZ Fund 2, um, I believe we have the best development site in the entire Southeast, which is um, our, our Nashville site. It's the old Beeman auto dealership site in the Gulch. Um, it's a great example of how much these neighborhoods have changed since the census of 2010. Um, and, and the Gulch is just a very, very different place. Um, it's not gentrifying. It's one of the best areas in Nashville. Um, Ava Gainesville is one of our build to rent um, deals. We, we're doing many of these deals, both in QZ, but also um, in our market rate funds, development funds. Build for rent, um, we love the demographics of this. I actually, I like them even better now because with the cost of housing going up through appreciation in the last two years, and now the mortgage rates have gone from three to five and a half, it's just not viable and affordable for people to buy. And so this build for rent product gives people that experience without having to buy. And, and we believe this demand segment is gonna be growing quite rapidly. These types of deals, you really want to get the highest returns, which you need to find are large land sites because this is horizontal development. I mean, you can't build up, 
And so you're not going to get the same density. So you have to get large land sites at the right basis that importantly are also close to downtowns. Um, and so you don't want to be in the middle of nowhere. And that's what's so interesting here. So you're in you're in East Atlanta. Origin is incredibly experienced in Atlanta. We've done over 2,500 units in Atlanta, um, not just development, but also value add, core. Um, we recently sold a deal for Fund 3 that we built a phase two on in, in the Virginia Highlands. Um, this is just an extension of an awful lot of activity over the last 10 years, um, and we're quite active. But this particular site is um, less than you know a, a two minute drive from the downtown, totally um, in the density access to retail that you want. Um, we love the price. Um, we've been working on this deal of the land. We, we've been working on it for over nine months. Um, importantly, the returns here are so so high relative to the risk because we're we're also close to securing ten million dollars of tax credits. Um, so now, and we do this a lot. Um, another example would be in Colorado Springs. We have deals in the, our, our first QZ fund and second QZ fund where we're layering on the QOC benefit with tax incentives from the city. And these are the types of unique um, opportunities that, that we try really hard to provide our investors. Um, an 18.9% base case IRR in our world, the way we underwrite, um, just to get in the weeds a little bit, we don't trend rents during development. We drift our cap rates higher 2% a year. We're incredibly conservative. And so for us to show you a 19, I would tell you that that's in other firms underwriting so much higher. And, and, and uh, it's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at any funds projected returns, you, you need to get into the weeds of, of how they're coming into their models and how they're looking at the world. Um, we tend to over deliver, I would tell you. <clears throat> this is our full um, QZ2 fund pipeline. And what you'll notice is um, I would, focus mostly on the second estimated QZ fund to equity need. Um, it mirrors the size of the fund. And what I'm trying to convey here is this fund is fully sourced. Um, the deal that I told you about um, in Nashville that I think is the, the best deal in the Southeast. When I say that, I mean market rate or QZ, um, just based on its location, demand drivers, rent growth. Um, that's a fun two deal, that's Ed Schill comments. Um, but I could go on and on. The point is we're at equilibrium. We've been working on the sourcing for this fund for over you know, 12, 18 months. These, these deals are all ready to start or very close to ready to start. And so there, there's not gonna be a lag and you're benefiting from all that work. Um, we're not trying to grow and put out money that isn't the highest margin money. That's how we say top decile is we keep capital raising and deal sourcing at equilibrium. Um, I think Origin provides a really good balance of we're big enough, 45 people, 15 years of operating history, plenty of data for you to decide if you think we're a good manager, but we're not so big that we have to put out huge amounts of money. Um, and I, I actually believe as, as funds grow, their returns come down because they actually become too big um, and, and they're not able to, to choose and, and pick the best deals. So next steps, uh, and then I'll answer questions. Um, please, investor relations at origininvestments.com. If you would like, uh, I'll give you my email, david at origininvestments.com. I know it's not customary for a co-CEO to do that, but the reality is, even though we have close to 3,000 investors, um, I want to make myself accessible. And if I can't answer the question, um, I will absolutely send you the team member who can't. Um, so both of those are vital options or, or you have a URL code there as well. So Jimmy, thank you. Um, I'm open to any questions at this point. I see that there's been a few. Should yeah, well, thank you, David. Yeah. yeah, we do have a few questions and uh, we'll see if we can get to a handful of those. Uh, let's do Jeff's question first. That one came in first. Uh, by the way, if you do have any questions throughout the course of today's event, you can use the Q&A tool in your Zoom toolbar to get those questions in front of us. Jeff asks, can you provide a real world numbers example of what it looks like for my money as an investor. If I put 500K in and want to cash out year 10 using your cash flow chart medians and 18% IRR estimate, 
how much am I receiving along the way and lump sum on year 10. So I, I don't know if you uh, have an abacus that you need to pull out right no. now, David, to, no, to get that. I, I, I can answer that question. Your best. Go ahead. Yeah. Th thank you, Jeff, for your question. I get these questions a lot and um, it's, it's easy to answer. Um, so in terms of your $500,000 investment, um, I'm going to answer it in terms of multiple. It's much easier than IRR. So if you invest 500,000, um, at the end of 10 years, our, our target multiple range is anywhere from 2.2 to 2.8. Um, we tend to outperform, but let's just, let's just take the midpoint and say 2.5. Um, your 500,000 will have grown to 1.25 million. And of course, 500,000 of that is return of capital. So your profit would be 750,000 um, at that point. The, the nice part is you don't pay taxes on that. So there's, the added benefit of that. Um, but that's true of any QOZ deal or fund. Um, in terms of when, because that's your second question, that was the chart that, that I showed you um, and everyone else. Um, in, in the sort of month 40 to 48 period, you're gonna get 20 to 25% of your $500,000 back from refinance. And, and so that's you know roughly $100,000 at that point. Every year thereafter, you're going to get six to seven percent on your money from cash flow from operations, and, and that equates on a five hundred thousand dollar investment to thirty to thirty five thousand. So if you're looking at your six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know you, there's an additional. I'll just make it very simple: five years at thirty thousand, hundred and fifty thousand return there, and then the rest. So the bulk of what you're going to get back is obviously at the end when we sell the assets. Um, and that should make sense because, you know, generally we're, you know, we're keeping this at about 60 to 40, that's equity. So when you sell, you're unlocking that equity and returning it um, to the investor. I hope that's helpful. Um, if it didn't answer your question um, completely, email me, David at Origin Investments, and, and we can absolutely go over this offline. Thank you. Great. Uh, great answer there. Uh, Jeff, hopefully that answered your question. Otherwise, yeah, please do feel free to reach out to David or his team directly. Um, Dave, we did get a, uh, a request for you to turn back your turn your camera back on um, if you're able to, but if not, we can hear you just fine. So not mm -hmm. totally urgent. But uh, the next question here, we've got time for, I think, two or three more questions here uh, before we close things up with this segment. Um, this one comes from an anonymous attendee. He or she wants to know, what is the status of the seed deals? Are they closed? Are they in diligence? I think my camera's on, so it is. Yes. Yeah. So, um, it, it, the answer is it, it, it depends. Um, so there's, there's deals that, um, we have under control, meaning we have the land tied up and have for over a year. Um, that's something I didn't really mention, but you know, we have land tied up at prices from, you know, mid 2020, early 2021, they're deeply, deeply in the money. And this is another thing that you should ask any manager. So if I bought a piece of land for $40 million and today it's worth 80, am I marking it up? Because a lot of fund managers do, and, and we don't. Um, and everyone who enters this fund is getting enormous edge on the land purchases because we've been working on these deals and tying them up so long ago. Um, and so that's one benefit, but in terms of pre-development, um, we have certain deals that are breaking ground. David Dane, Gainesville, for example, that breaks ground next month horizontally and no month after vertically. So um, that would be a deal that's far along in pre-development. Um, but then there's other deals like Edge Hill, Nashville, that'll be a, a Q1 or Q2 2023 groundbreaking. Um, it's a much more complicated deal because it's, it's urban infill and you're having to deal with you know, the city traffic patterns um, it's multi-phase structured parking. Um, so that would be a deal that we've been in pre-development for, you know, well over a year. Um, we tied up, up the land, you know, 12, 18 months ago. It's up in value significantly, but it's a complicated deal. So again, this is a great question, but I don't have time to answer it deal by deal. If you're interested, email me at David at Origin Investments. And, um, I'll probably put you in touch with um, the regional action position and investment management teams who can uh, take you through it. Excellent. Uh, well, let's move on to the next question here. Jerry 
asks, on your built to rent projects, do the renters have a purchase option after 10 years? And if so, does any of their rent apply against such a purchase? Uh, thanks for the question. Good question. Um, the, the short answer is no. Uh, we don't do that. Um, it's a fine strategy, but um, remember, uh, we don't know how many of our investors are going to decide to stay in the fund and have it um, grow over time tax-free. So you wouldn't want to do things like that because it would actually impair your flexibility on the other side. Um, so that, that wouldn't be something we would do. Yeah, good point there. Uh, we got time for one more question and then we'll, we'll move along to the next segment. Uh, final question coming in is how does Origin decide which deals go into your growth fund versus your qualified opportunity zone fund? Yeah, that's a good question too. Um, any deal that falls within the QOZ maps goes into the QOZ fund. Um, the opportunity set in QOZ, in my opinion, is quite small the way we view the world, right? So when we're looking at the cities we're in, we're in 11 cities and we're only in approved submarkets within those cities. And then you have to overlay, overlay the QZ map within those approved submarkets. It gets pretty small. And so then on top of that, we have to buy at the same price that's economically viable. Um, so anything that's in QZ maps that meets our criteria goes into our QZ funds, full stop. Perfect. It's as easy as that. Well, thank you, David, for appearing here with us today and, and presenting Origin Investments QOZ Fund 2. Um, I'll have to let Michael know you did a great job. It's always uh, great to meet more of the Origin Investments team. Thank you so much for your time today, David. Appreciate it. Well, thanks for the invite, Jimmy. I appreciate it. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. You too.